our team has come up with something called Crop Wizard, which uses a chat GPT type interface where um, you can ask it questions, uh, agricultural questions. You can put in pictures of weeds or bugs or things. And in addition to trying to identify, it'll look up resources about how to control, um, do a whole and come up with recommendations. Hi, and welcome to Illinois Corn TV. I'm your host today, Haley Bickelhoff, and I'm the Policy Communications Manager here at Illinois Corn. On this show, we position our Illinois farmers to grow. Now, we have a two-part series, and we're going to kick it off with part one, an interview with Dennis Bowman, who's an education specialist at the University of Illinois. Dennis had a lot of great insight on AI and technology and how the university is using that to help our farmers. One thing I think our viewers are going to find really interesting is an app that he talks about called Crop Wizard that is going to very tangibly use AI to help farmers identify crops and weeds and answer questions in the field. Let's go ahead and jump right into that interview. Well, welcome, Dennis. Thanks for being here with us today. Well, thank you, Haley. Yes. Well, I want to first know more about your role at the University of Illinois. I know we're, we're both alumni here and you're wearing your orange and blue. So can you start us off by telling us a little bit more about what you do day to day? Um, I've worked for the University of Illinois Extension for over 42 years in different roles, mostly as it relates to being an agronomist, a regional agronomist with Extension. And over the last couple of years, I've transitioned to a role um, as a specialist in digital agriculture. Um, and the U of I is really lucky to have uh, an organization here on campus called the Center for Digital Ag, where folks from engineering and the college bases can get together and work jointly on projects. And uh, a lot of those projects need uh, outreach and they need people with extension background to, to help get the message out about some of the different work that's going on here at the U of I. Well, Dennis, now we're gonna move on to our part two, not to be corny. So I'm gonna try to hit you with a pretty corny joke. Um, so we're, the joke is, why did the AI farmer bring a math book to the barn? I don't know. Because it wanted to improve its calculus skills. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we want to start by just asking a little bit about AI. I know that's a big topic um, that a lot of people uh, are consumed with right now. So tell us, are, should farmers be worried about this? Um, for farmers, I think in general, I don't know that it's something that they should be worried about as it relates to agriculture. Um, I think in, in agriculture, um, we're kind of a low risk area for artificial intelligence. I think there's some things that it can do for us that um, will help us analyze data better, um, labor saving kinds of things. Um, so I think there's some real benefits to agriculture. Um, some of the other areas outside of agriculture we want to, may want to be a little cautious about, but um, in ag, I think it offers us some real promise. And what, what are some of those promises it could offer us? Well, farmers know that they're generating tons of data now. Um, yield monitors, uh, soil tests, um, as applied maps from all the equipment. Um, so how do we get value out of that? And it's almost becoming too much for a person to take the time to analyze. And a lot of farmers don't have somebody on their farm that, that has that expertise. And so I think as we get better, uh, smarter systems with AI that can take some of these data layers and start helping tease information that might be of value to the farmer out of it, to be able to highlight areas that were, would have required the farmer's attention, potentially suggest activities. Um, and then the whole area of, of the autonomous type agriculture um, with the John Deere Sea and Spray is one of the big first big um, pushes that uh, towards uh, an AI system that's integrated into an agricultural uh, tool. Definitely. And so talking about AI and some of these other topics, can you tell us more about precision farming and how they could be related to each other? Well, precision farming, you know, is has been around since the, the mid 90s and um, in various forms. When we got GPS started uh, being integrated into our equipment, um, that allowed us to start making some of these data layers and making equipment that could respond as it's going across the field to make adjustments in 
uh, planting rates or um, with uh, fertilizer applications, variable rate technology um, are all pieces of precision farming um, so that we can um, take the, the GPS information and tie it to specific spots in our farm um, and allow us to make adjustments um, and not have to do everything on a whole farm or whole field basis so we can customize things. Um, you know, a lot of, early on, some of the people were kind of disillusioned with some of the variable rate fertilizer applications. They didn't see a, a major yield impact um, and they didn't see a reduction necessarily in fertilizer. They just saw it being reallocated in different places across the field. Um, but there's a lot of value in that as well um, as we look at environmental impacts. Um, and better use and better stewardship of our inputs. Um, but it definitely, some of the original tools did not have a, a big money saving uh, factor or a money making factor and yield, big yield increases right off the bat. Um, so a lot of the precision farming technologies have revolved more around convenience of the autonomous and guidance systems on our implements, um, which also does increase efficiency quite a bit. So that's one of the, the tools that we have seen, the row shutoffs, um, the, uh, the better uh, straighter driving. Um, you don't have to have quite as much training and artistry to, to make straight rows as you used to have. Wow, <laughs> exhibit A of what AI can do, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of a, a, a frivolous um, thing, but um, it does show, you know, some of the what can happen with AI that it, it can actually try to make some things like that. Very cool. Well, that was the perfect way to end, I think, our episode today. And so, Dennis, I think that you have so much, you're a wealth of knowledge. And so I'm sure we'll have you back on the show soon. And we are excited to learn more about what you guys have coming down the pipeline and how our farmers can participate. So thank you. Well, Dennis, how, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Probably at this point, the best way would be to email me at nbbowman at illinois.edu um, and I can get them in touch with the, the folks that are working on the project. This has been another episode of Illinois Corn TV where we deliver insightful ag interviews, positioning farmers to grow. Stay tuned for more content every week and be sure to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next week.